Warning. The video you are about to watch is a story breakdown and review of Where the Dead Go to Die, an adult animated anthology featuring extreme violence and upsetting subject matter. Despite the poor animation, this film is horribly disturbing and as such I feel it necessary to advise you of the contents before you decide to go any further. Where the Dead Go to Die depicts subjects including but not limited to murder, dismemberment, child abuse, penectomy, PTSD, domestic abuse, incest, demons and devil dogs among many others. This is a film that lives in the more abstract and extreme corner of the horror genre and if any of that sounds like it may be too much, I cannot stress enough that you must stop the video now. You have been warned. Hello, Jumbo. Oh, hey, lovey. Silence! Sorry, lovey. I have spoken with God, God, and he has passed down the word. This week you shall view the most holy of texts. No. Oh, yes. No. Yes, yes, oh, oh, yes. No. <laughs> What's that like to live delicious? Chaos reigns. Please don't scream. <laughs> Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos for creative. <laughs> Hi there, my name's John Joe Lyons, and today I'm here to present to you my review for Where the Dead Go to Die. He's watching you. Written, directed, animated, and edited by Jimmy Screamer Claus, Where the Dead Go to Die stars Ruby LaRocca, Brandon Slagle, Joey Smack, Linnea Quigley, and Devani Pin, among many others. A troubled group of children living on the same block are haunted by a talking dog named Labby who brings them on a surreal hell ride between different dimensions and time periods. Where the Dead Go to Die is another horror movie that I was introduced to through the hard mode lists over on Nick's Fears. Go check them out, link in the description. And it seemed too exquisitely weird to pass up. I love anthology movies to begin with, but that paired with the f***ed up subject matter and the weird visuals just screams a good time. Ring around the road. Good, good time. Good time. Now with all that being said, let's crack on. The film begins with opening credits as we see Tommy looking down a well and then walking home. We see the title card for chapter one, tainted milk, then cut inside. Inside, Tommy asks where babies come from, which causes a fight between his parents. You, why don't you tell your son where babies come from? Because the lady in the well told me. Yo, do you hear this? Tommy mentions he's been talking to the woman in the well when dad chimes in insinuating that Tommy was a mistake and the mother's fault. Tommy's mother tells him to go to school and that they'll be splitting up. Tommy leaves and on his way to school he's confronted by Labby, the sh** your pants terrifying devil dog. Labby tells Tommy that the baby his mother is pregnant with is the Antichrist and Tommy must kill it. When did you get back into town? God sent me to tell you that, that the child living inside of your mother is, is the Antichrist. I don't know, Labby. Tommy asks what they should do, and then we cut to the parents' bedroom as they sleep. Labby then attacks, ripping the fetus out of the mother and biting the dad's dick off before ripping out his throat. Mutilation check. Labby says the dad's dick is where the sin originated from, and that's why they had to cut it off. Labby then tells Tommy to scratch himself with the baby's fingernails to make it look like it attacked him. So, like, that is self defense. Tommy passes out and has a dream about a fetus in a bubble, and then we cut to his parents, who are now anthropomorphic dogs. Mmm, those sure look good. Before being confronted by the Shadow Men. What's the matter, Tommy? The Shadow Men ask if Tommy thought the lady in the well would bring the sunshine, and then he wakes up to find Labby gone. Tommy goes back to the well for more advice, where he's confronted by Monk. Monk asks what Tommy's greatest wish is, and he says to have his parents still alive. Labby then appears, advising this can be arranged. In return, God wants only one thing, his virginity. Cut to Tommy 
and the dog on top of the maggot-filled corpse of his dead mother. Labby then disappears again, leaving Tommy with his dead parents and brother. Tommy waits for days, hoping that his parents will resurrect, but when they don't, he cradles the baby and we cut to the title card for chapter 2, Liquid Memories. Okay, Labby mate, I think I'm done with this now. I can help ease your pain, child. How? You must kill. I didn't even tell him who to kill. Any better? The, the screams. Cut to a blood-soaked Tommy sitting by the well as he's being watched by the man. The man says he killed himself the other day and then we cut to him stabbing another man to death. You see, the man has been murdering people and then extracting their memories from a gland in their head and then injecting himself to experience said memories. Cut to a woman who offers sexual favours to a homeless war veteran. He gets her to f**k off his stick legs and then we flash back to the war times as he fights off these weird looking smiley face He's ambushed, however, and loses both his legs. Cut back to the alley as the veteran goes crazy and gouges the woman's eye out. She fights back and shoves a broken bottle into his throat. The woman, now badly injured, manages to crawl away, seeking refuge at a nearby church. The same church being inhabited by the murderous man. The shadow men tell him that he must harvest the woman as she begs to be let in. Let her in, harvest her. Tentacles then drag her inside. The woman attempts to talk to the man, but he does not answer. She first asks for him to call an ambulance, but then when he doesn't answer, she just asks to be held as she dies. The man then slashes her throat, extracts her memories, and injects himself. Cue a savage hallucination as the man begins to experience the woman's memories. I think. The first time I watched this, I thought it was his memories when he was a kid and what led him to be the serial killer, but now it seems to be that it's the woman's memories mixed in with his own. The man falls into a blood vortex, landing in an alien palm, disintegrating and then reappearing in the neighborhood. We see a faceless boy and his dog, which goes very the thing all of a sudden. The boy kills a puppy and the sister tells on him. So to punish him, the mother has sex with him? Back at the church, the man sees the woman masturbating next to a baby having its eyes pecked out by crows. The man then has sex with the woman as tentacles come out of his eyes. The man finds himself at the well with the monk who advises she needs you. We all need you. They're joined by Labby, who pins the man down and makes him watch as corpses have sex and a woman presents a newborn to the sky. God turned his back on her. Cut to the boy in the jail cell as the mother tells him that Scruffles wasn't his fault and we cut to all the monsters circled around Labby as he eats ass. The camera spins to reveal the man's face on Labby's body. Cut to the man in the road as he saves Scruffles and the boy thanks him. The man then explains that he has split the memory, converting it into something positive. That's when the faceless woman emerges, wrapped in tentacles, and says that he could help her too. The man sits with the faceless girl at the edge of a precipice, and then they jump into the face vortex. Cut to the little girl telling the boy that they could run away to the carnival. Labby tells the boy that she doesn't understand and tries to get him to kill her. She runs when suddenly they're at the carnival. Labby asks the man if he thinks what he did made a difference, and the man states that the carnival is his fondest childhood memory, and that he gave it to her. He is then eaten by a shadow monster. He then sees the deleted memories of the kids and states that he must kill them to forget them entirely. He then smashes the boy's head in and slits the throat of the girl. The man questions if any of this is real before sparking one of the shadow men who then beats the sh out of him. The man then cradles the woman and shoots himself. Cut to Tommy chopping up his parents at the suggestion of the Shadow Men. He then kisses the mother's severed head goodbye and sets the room on fire before burying the bodies. Cut to the chapter 3 title card, The Masks That Monsters Wear. Now, I'm just gonna speed through this one, okay? We meet a boy with a Siamese twin on his head with whom he shares a brain. His parents hate him, especially his dad. He falls in love with a neighbor girl and the father gives him a tape of her being abused. Mm. Labby pushes the boy into the well where he has a dream about the girl loving him despite its two faces. He then goes to the house and the dad films them having sex. The boy finds the tape and expresses his admiration to the boy, which he responds by bashing his brains in with a baseball bat and shooting his mother. He 
goes to the girl's house and kills the father and a couple of other guys there. <laughs> Abby then tells him to cut off the twin, which he does. <sighs> cool. Whatever. Finally, we cut back to the world where the three kids sit with the monk, the woman, and the man. The end. Good lord. Where the dead go to die is a supremely trippy journey into hell that I really didn't know how to feel about. The animation is of course absolutely awful, but I think that only adds to the incredibly surreal nature of the film. The same can be said for the sound design and voice acting, especially from the character Labby. The stories themselves are all absolutely horrible, but unlike Flesh of the Void or Regurgitated Sacrifice, I felt like the shocking parts weren't just there to shock. There is a purpose behind all of the elements in the film that when put together feels like the worst acid trip one could ever experience. That being said, the horrors on display here are uncomfortably child-centric. I'm going to assume the reason for that is because children represent innocence, the antithesis to Labby's ultimate evil. Either that or the director just hates kids. I feel like I've seen the other side and it isn't pretty. So that was my review of Whether Dead Go To Die. I highly recommend you go and check it out for yourself because you can find out what happens in the film, yeah sure, but watching it and experiencing it for yourself is crazy. Like. What a nutty little movie. It's hard to explain just how uncomfortable it made me feel. If you've seen it, please let me know in the comments below what you thought. Also, go check out patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. And for as little as a dollar a month, you'll be able to gain access to this video and any video coming after it in all of its uncut glory. I'm going to be, yeah, putting out the uncut videos from now on. So if you go to Patreon, you can check it out there. But you will experience a huge lack of Nicolas Cage's face. So, you know, it's whether or not you think that's positive. Also, thank you so much to everyone that's been supporting the channel. Everyone that's been coming in and getting involved in the discussions. Like, I really, really appreciate it. Subscribe, like, do all those good things to make the algorithm actually love me. Rather than burying all my videos in the nether regions of Outworld. But thank you for watching. My name's John Joe Lyons. Stay frosty. There. It's done. Now, I only have one wish. I want my flatmates back. I want everything to go back to normal. That can be arranged, my child. But first, you must give something to God. What is it? I f the dog.